The first thing to do when organizing a trial is to make sure that every section is rideable. When you lay out a section, make certain the rider has to go where you want him to go. Watch Peter Sterland here. He takes his Royal Enfield down through the gully at the turn. Into subsection B, close in at the corner and to the left of the two trees. Up past the section ends card and a clean performance. Now see how Bill Brooker tackles the same section on his PSA. He picks a different path. In close at the first turn to avoid the gully. Then he makes an easy sweep to the right, omitting the wriggle past the trees. He's kept to the course, but had a much easier ride than Sterling did. Here's how to make it foolproof for both riders. Take the marker tape out so that the gully can't be avoided when turning in subsection A. And at the trees in subsection B, display a card. Then riders know they must keep between the card and the tape, and so negotiate the wriggle. The layout here shows other common faults. Subsection B starts on a hump, and this sort of thing can easily happen. From this angle, you can see that Staff Sergeant Nicholson has stopped in B, not A. But there's room for doubt if the observer isn't in just the right place. Either way, of course, he's in a real sergeant's mess. The next tricky spot is right at the section ends card. In fact, Nicholson is out of the section. But again, you've got to look closely to be certain. The remedy in both instances is simple. Put the hump well and truly in subsection B by moving the B cards forward. If a rider stops, the whole of his machine, and not just the front wheel, will be inside the subsection. At the top, the section ends card is moved farther back, where there's very little likelihood of anyone coming a cropper, or even footing. Competitors must be able to see the cards easily. If the grass is tall, mount the cards on posts, like this. Now let's look at the hazard when everything is as it should be. Sterland has no option but to enter the gully. Hump is in subsection B. After the turn, Sterling must go to the left of the trees. The ends card is clear of the rough stuff and easy to see. A properly laid out section is only half the battle. The observers must know their job. Know that footing more than once means a penalty of three marks and that they have to watch very closely. Sterling makes the turn feet up, but when almost clear, has to dab, just once, and the penalty is one mark only. But was it only one dab? If there was any doubt about it, what about this? One mark or three? If there's a doubt, always give the rider the benefit. Harry Rayner looks safe enough on his greaves as he approaches the turn and starts the climb, but the observer mustn't relax. Quite unexpectedly, this sort of thing can happen. Did he actually stop for a moment? Here's Sterland again. Watch closely as he nears the end of the section. The rules say a machine is out of a section when the front wheel spindle is past the car. An appeal to the observer is justified here. Fortunately, he's standing in just the right place. OK, Sterland is in the clear. What about this for a problem? To be faulted, a rider must stop, come into physical contact with the ground, leave the course, or ride in the reverse direction of the course. Rainer just touched that tree, and the rules don't answer that one. Now have a look at Brooker. deliberately steadied himself against the tree. So probably you should mark Rayner clean and Brooker afoot. The tape is to mark the course, but Staff Sergeant Nicholson runs his front wheel over it, then takes the lot with him to remove all doubt. 
And that little escapade's cost him five marks. Broca, in his turn, only brushes the tapes. Obviously, no penalty. And what about this Cook's tour effort? Rainer's feet up, he's non-stop, but he's turned a complete circle and ridden in the reverse direction of the course. So, he's failed. In the sandpit here, the run down and the corner are easy to Harry Rayner. The sting is at the end. Rayner's offline and goes to the left instead of between the cars. Another failure. Even the shortest of sections usually requires at least three officials. First, a starter, to see that two riders are not in the section together. Secondly, an observer, to note performances. Thirdly, a marshal, preferably a lusty, energetic type. If the section is particularly stiff and there's a big entry, quite a few helpers may be required. The starter can do more than just give the OK to riders. He should see that numbers are not obscured by rubber bands, that they're clean and easy for the observers to read. But most important, he should make certain the section is clear for each competitor. Just look at this. Rain has stopped, and along comes Sterland without a hope of getting past. He's entitled to claim a bulk and would be given another run when Rainer's out of the way. But how much better if the starter had done his job properly? Accurate observing means selecting the vantage point that gives a full view of what goes on. Look at that observer, he can't see a thing. If necessary, two or more observers must work together. This is better. Now everything the rider does can be seen beyond all reasonable doubt, as they say in the law courts. Marshals, too, must use a spot of intelligent anticipation. Even before competitors arrive, a difficult patch will be obvious, and that's where the marshal should be. If he's somewhere else, he's not likely to be so useful. But if he is in the right place, he can be giving a helping hand a second or so after the rider has stopped. This is important. A rider shouldn't be pushed until he has actually stopped. If a marshal gets to work too quickly, the rider's performance will rank as a failure, although he might have kept going with plenty of leg work. Here's how it should be done. Wait till the rider has definitely stopped. A hefty push, and he's away. Here's an illustration of the way observers should consult each other when in doubt. At this stream crossing, Stalin stops at the cards separating the two subsections. Which observer's card should show the failure? Now's the time to settle the question. The observers sort it out on the spot, mark their cards, and all's well. Rainer saw Sterling stop at the bank, so he nips smartly off his greaves and keeps going by running alongside. Nevertheless, he should be marked as a failure. Penalty, five points. An observer's scorecard is precious, so keep it dry and keep it clean. Even on dry days, watch out for this sort of unexpected mishap. Trying to read through mud is tough on the results team. The army system of marking makes the competitor responsible for his own scorecard, which is marked up after each section. 
This scheme has its points, though it does mean that every rider is delayed a few seconds after each section. Some riders in civilian trials make a habit of stopping at the end of sections. A few like to argue about their marking. So, here's a final point for observers. Have none of it. Of course, arguments are few and far between in the thousands of trials that are run each year. But none of us are perfect, and anything we can do that in any way helps the sport, whether it be from the rider's point of view, the officials, or the spectators, then that's what we want to do. After all, it's the sport that matters. Thank <laughs> you.